Hey, this is Ryan at Movie Clips, and we're here with John Favreau, writer-director of Chef, and we're going to talk about the movie. John. Yes. Um, throughout your career, you've been working on movies of increasing budgets and scales, and this until is until now. Until now, <laughs> and I was wondering what what made you decide that this was the time to kind of go for something smaller, more more indie. It's each movies aren't just movies, you know. Each situation is different, and usually the thing that dictates what the experience is going to be like is the the budget slash creative control. You, the, the smaller the budget, the, you tend to have more creative control, less collaboration, creative input. Uh, I like the big movies because while they, you know, when they get released, they have big marketing campaigns and uh, there's a lot more anticipation, more people see it around the world, and you get to use, you know, the cutting edge technology, mm -hmm. which is also expensive. So if you if you want to work with the cutting edge uh, technology, it, it's tough to do that on a, on a smaller film. But from time to time, it's really nice to just clear out the room and just see what you have to say alone. Because so much of the time you spend on a bigger movie is in rooms and, and pitching your idea to the studio and taking their input and taking other people's ideas. And then also uh, relying on creative people who work for you also that you collaborate with. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of collaboration. It's the nature of the beast. And I think it's what makes movies great is when you collaborate. But every once in a while it's nice to see, you know, what your, what your acoustic album would be like. Um, and I was curious, having seen the movie, um, a lot of the movie is about a chef, or the whole movie is about a chef who has kind of been working for someone else for a while and he mm -hmm. wants to work for himself. And I, I'm curious, it, was it a conscious choice to kind of make that parallel in the movie, or did it just kind of come out that way? I think that that, that that tension of, and it's not just in food, it's not just in, in movies or in music. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes back to, you know, the Sistine Chapel is legendary for the Pope, Pope's clashes with Michelangelo over controlling the creative vision of this thing that was incredibly important, incredibly expensive, mm -hmm. uh, and had, had religious ramifications, so the stakes were very high. And artists tend to be more passionate and tormented, and certainly chefs are, and sometimes filmmakers are. I don't think I'm, maybe I have a, a, a skewed view of myself, I don't see myself as a, 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 a passionate visionary. I think I'm, I'm more pragmatic, but, but I do get a really, uh, uh, I have a lot of passion in the work that I do. But I think I'm pretty pragmatic from situation to situation. I like to adjust and learn each game I'm playing. That's part of the fun for me. Uh, so for this film, it was definitely uh, there were definitely parallels to what my experiences had been, but I really tried to key in on a, a very small aspect of of my personality. As you do when you're an actor, you got to kind of pick what facet of yourself you wanna you want to um, exaggerate. So there are aspects of me that are reflected in this, but if you look at this and you look at Swingers, it's, you know I'm still playing facets of myself, but very different facets of myself, and it was fun too have the guy, you know, the guy screaming at critics. I've, I've never done that. <laughs> the, guy's, the guy is uh, uh, quitting his job and yelling and, and uh, you know, uh, he's on Twitter just flaming out and <laughs> ranting and raving and it's mm -hmm. on YouTube and, you know, it, it's things I, I see around me, but I'm too neurotic and shy <laughs> and I think well-balanced and mature to really do. But the chefs that I've, uh, you know, in the chef world, they they're not as aware that they're public figures. And so you get these really interesting uh, responses. Usually it's like to a Yelp review. Mm -hmm. And somebody will write, I, I went into the restaurant, because everybody's a reviewer. It's not like, yeah. you know, when I started off in the movie business when, where there were food reviewers that were. But, but now it's like everybody has a voice. And, and if you have a restaurant, you know, your Yelp rating is, is, is a bigger deal than, than, than what critics write. And so if somebody says that they had a terrible experience, those chefs will get on and go right back at them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go back and forth, and then they'll get picked up by the food blogs. And then all of a sudden, now they're infamous, and now they, they're cultivating this persona that uh, is, is, is a character, and, and it draws customers in, and, they be, and maybe they end up on cooking shows mm -hmm. or having, you know. Uh, uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting moment in history where social media and the voice of the individual are sometimes are at odds with one another and mm -hmm. sometimes support one another. And, and the food truck movement that this is about was a real, uh, 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 only really came about because of social media and Twitter. Otherwise, food trucks, nobody would know where they are. But, mm -hmm. but you could have hundreds of people lined up because they're following these chefs or these trucks. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a really timely story, and, uh, and it, did, it was informed by the 
creative process, which is something that's really interesting and, and pertinent to me. Yeah. Um, I saw I saw an interview with you probably about a year and a year and a half ago where you said that you were interested in going back to play in the writer, director, star yeah. kind yeah. of sandbox. And I was, I'm curious, was was this the film you had in mind when you when you were saying that? Did you know no. that you were heading in that direction or no. you just had a feeling? I you wanted to do something about food. I didn't know it would be me. I didn't mm -hmm. know it would be this. I, you know, I've been developing a lot of different things and I've been like, what if the guy's a cook? What if it's a restaurant? TV projects, movie projects, because I wanted to, you know, you have to, if you're going to write or especially if you're going to direct, you've got to have a subject matter that you want to obsess about mm -hmm. if you're going to work for a year, two years on this thing. Uh, so food was there, but I also was watching like Louis, I was watching Lena Dunham, I was watching uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and because uh, cable has become such an important part of the landscape, and even people doing it for, you know, like Broad City, you know, you have people starting off online. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Freddie Wong, working with Freddie Wong also. It's like there's more room for individuals with unique voices to either self-distribute or distribute in arenas where ratings aren't as important as they were or box office isn't important mm -hmm. as it was when I was starting out. And so I would see all these people doing, looking like they're having a good time telling unique stories, clearly they're very passionate about it. Some some you connect with, some you don't. I tended to connect with those, you know, offbeat uh, tone, uh, the offbeat uh, uh, smaller product and the tone that comes from the individual. And and so, and I remember I started off doing that really with, with Swingers, was, was, was that kind of thing. And, and so part of me wondered if I could still do it, honestly, uh, because I had been so supported on the bigger projects and and part of me was like what what the hell do I have to say anymore mm -hmm. because nobody wants to hear about my life I mean in an interview they might but it's just not it's just not that interesting to be honest with you mm -hmm. I'm a dad I am established in my career um, I, I my life gets more and more boring every year which I think <laughs> is a victory and uh, it's just not it's not pertinent but but then finding the angle of this character who didn't make all the good choices that I did and if you know, if I had put everything in my career uh, 10, 20 years ago and not focused on balancing my life or uh, uh, prioritizing things the way that I did in my real life, I, I, I start to think, what, you know, where would you end up if you mm -hmm. ignored everything except your career? And I find that, you know, a lot of people in the movie business do that. And, uh, and a lot of people travel a lot and away from their homes. And, it, and then they find themselves 10 years down the road unhappy mm -hmm. and then they look around they say how did I get here what what I was so happy at a certain point I was following my dreams uh, so it seemed like a, a nice parable for for somebody who's in there deep into their 40s as mm -hmm. opposed to somebody who was uh, you know about to turn 50 and they, I was about to turn 30 mm -hmm. back in swingers and so it was an interesting snapshot and and you learn about yourself when you make these things it gives you a little window into your subconscious and, and uh, it was it just it's been a tremendous amount of fun mm -hmm. and, and, and really rewarding. So whatever made me do it, I'm glad. I'm glad I just decided to, you know, put everything else on hold and do this for a while. And when you went back into the kind of smaller indie creatively free space, like you said, because there's lower budgets, you have more creative freedom, did you find that you slipped right back into that, like, yeah. and felt comfortable immediately? No problem. It was great. Because it was what I started off doing and... And I wasn't directing. Um, I was directing, but but it was more like I was playing with the other actors, mm -hmm. and I wasn't directing a lead. I just went in there, and I kind of knew what the choices were. And the and, and and since I wrote the script, I didn't really have to. The directing happened while I was writing, so everything kind of just segued into the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so much of the preparation was all of this chef training that I had done. And I worked with a, a chef named Roy Choi, who's a very passionate guy, very dedicated, and he really put me through the paces for months. First going to culinary school, then prepping in his kitchens then working the line during dinner service and really being part of that world and and for somebody who's so stuck in you know my life to be able to have a completely different experience and at a point in my life when it was really exciting to learn which is what happens as you get older you just become very curious and and I had I had read so much about cooking and done so much research for this and and and, and read memoirs and watch cooking shows to finally be in a kitchen with a great chef and be taught and then learn that I'm good at it and, and it's a skill that I can now now I use at home and carry forward 
is one of those, it's like one of those unexpected treats that, you know, you thought you were sort of going down one path in your life and then something interesting happens that makes it better. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen that much when you get older, to be <laughs> honest with you. You tend to just kind of, you know, you're like, what is it, the sea cucumber that like starts off traveling around the ocean floor and then it settles in one place and then eats its own brain? <laughs> that's, what, that's what humans are like, too. You tend to just sort of settle into a comfortable situation and digest your own brain. Well, so. John... Thank you for doing great, this and for up, ending. No, thank you for ending on beautiful <laughs> imagery as always. Um, but so, thank you so much, yeah. and um, congratulations on the movie. It's yeah. so great. Everybody, go see Chef. It's wonderful. And again, John is wonderful in it, and the writing and directing is top notch. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Great. Comment below. Thank you for watching. <laughs>